Well, hi there, friends. Thank you for tuning to my YouTube channel. Jose Quinones, the CNC dude here, wishing you all an awesome, happy new year. And I hope that 2015 is an excellent year for all of you. Um, yeah, 2015 just started barely 11 hours ago. And I have a cool project. Uh, actually, I started this project last year. Uh, but uh, I'm going to show you today a cool fourth axis project. And as I'm recording this, the fourth axis is already here. Uh, but in, this, in the subsequent shots, you're going to see uh, how I mounted it all and, you know, basically the part that I manufactured uh, using the fourth axis. Extremely cool. The fourth axis is a must for everybody, uh, for anybody having um, a CNC machine. XYZ are good enough uh, for the great majority of projects, but there are just a few projects out there where you're just gonna need the fourth axis. So if you are going to invest countless thousands of dollars on a CNC milling machine, I recommend catching out Fifteen to two, uh, fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars for the fourth axis. Now, on this video, I am not gonna go in all of the details um, that you can possibly think of on the fourth axis because that that has already been documented uh, by John from NYC CNC. He has a tremendous series uh, on the fourth axis. You know how to mount it, how to deal with it, how to do everything that you can possibly think of is practically the manual on the fourth axis and I do have to say that thanks to John I was able to make this part I have been trying to make this part for the past two years okay two years and you know basically I wanted to spread cam try trillions upon trillions of different ways of doing this I sent the part to forums to uh, Tormac and nobody could figure this out until I saw one dinky little piece of information uh, on John's video and BAM! Right there, hyperspace, I was able to make this part. So I, I will try to explain that in uh, another of my videos, but on this video I just want to show you how to manufacture this part. So let's get to it. Here is where we are so far. I have placed my fourth axis attachment into the table. Um, I added the chuck, that's how we're gonna grab this part. And um, I have already faced a piece of two inches uh, diameter, 6061 aluminum. Now I have placed the indicator on my, on my machine column. And what I plan on doing is making sure that this is aligned. Remember, this could be skewed and that would give an angle to our fissures. Um, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but I prefer not inducing such a mistake. Let me try to see if I can show you the indicator. Please excuse the uh, jumpiness here. It's gonna be tough like hell. I think the slide is not helping. All right. The uh, I have already I already have it in zero, and what's gonna happen is I'm gonna move it on on X. So if I traverse on X, my needle should deflect. And there is a little bit of a play, so I'm gonna knock it, and then um, just just slightly, just to remove that. I believe that's a a mil, a thousandth of an inch offset. And uh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do that off camera. But you get the idea. You keep on doing that until you see your needle on zero as as the traverse. Otherwise, you will be putting an angle. You will be putting an angle on the fissure. Another intriguing step here is uh, the use of the tail stop. I have never used this before, so um, completely new to this. There are a few knobs that you may need to uh, tweak with. Most likely, you will need to tweak with. First of all, it gets attached to the table, uh, you know, like any other like any other vise. Uh, you have uh, two two holes in here to attach to the table. Somehow, it looks it looks like there is an angle in between my keyways. Um, so that's kind of weird, but oh well, I think it's gonna work uh, well anyway. This knob on the top you can use to raise 
and lower the tailstock okay so if um, and by the way there is a knob back here that you cannot see but you have to um, you have to release this or it's not gonna move so you eyeball it and then with this other knob you move in this direction as to engage the port I'm using this is what is called a dead center versus a life center and uh, the difference is that this doesn't rotate so the life center like on a lathe it has um, it has ball bearings you know it rotates with the part this is called a dead center and uh, because it doesn't move and the reason why you want to use a dead center every now and then is because you want an area where there is no uh, material uh, no pretty much no steel and uh, in case you want a machine in there we're not gonna be machining in this region here I wonder if you guys can see what I'm talking about let me move this a little bit yeah that's definitely much better uh, so I was saying this region this region here is uh, what is called the dead center so this is not gonna rotate if my mill needed to come down here uh, for example for a moment there I couldn't find my mill but if my mill needed to come down here it would not it would not mess this this surface up and remember uh, most likely we're gonna be working on the top so you would want this guy on the top if you're gonna be doing something like a gear and you're working from this side then you have to move this guy to the other side uh, but it depends on whether you're gonna engage with this material or not my cuts are gonna be way up here so I don't foresee me ever reaching the region of this guy here so it's um it, it should be fine either way but just for 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 the hex i'm gonna put it on top that way we avoid any any possible accident in case i have a bug in the software which is always possible now the reason why i'm using the tailstock is because i'm gonna be applying pressure to the material in here and that's going to exert forces right it's gonna be a torque a force at a distance and although i believe that my chuck is powerful enough to counteract those forces um, it's, it, we're safer if we use a tailstock. Okay, okay, and that's the reason why there is a tailstock in case you are working with something that is long. And most likely, this is not long enough to justify a tailstock. But it's a good opportunity to use it. I've never used it before, so it's a good opportunity to use it and you guys to uh, check it out, see how it's being used. Um, I think my tailstock is engaged. My height is correct, so I'm going to I'm going to uh, screw everything in here. And the next step will be to uh, measure the coordinate system so that we are positive on where our zero is and where I mean our zero in X, our zero in Y, and then our zero in Z. So let's 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 take a look at that. All right, for finding my coordinate system, I'm going to use this electric probe. And uh, basically, the way this works is as soon as this ball here touches my metal. Uh, a light will, an LED will light up and that tells me that uh, contact with the ball has been made and my center, okay, my spindle center is 200 mils away from my surface. How do I know it's 200 mils or thousands? Well, because this ball right here is 400 mils. Okay, did that wrong. Point three nine nine nine. Uh, assuming this is a cheapo Harbor Freight um, micrometer, I think we can trust that is four hundred uh, thousandths of an inch. Which means that when this surface touches this surface, my center has to be two hundred, or basically the half of four hundred away. So let's let's quickly do this. I'm going to move until I see that light. And you know this uh, th this works because I have faced that part on the lathe. Um, if you haven't faced it, you may get different readings depending on the angle of the part. Okay, here's my light. I'm gonna go. There's my light. Okay, so right now my spindle is on two hundred thousandths of an inch positive. Positive because it is on this side of the quadrant. Remember your geometry class. Um, so my edge is on the negative, but my spindle is on the positive. So I'm gonna tell uh, Mac three with my camera here. I'm gonna tell Mac three X 
0 0.2, all right? Um, just to double check to make sure that we are where we are supposed to be, I'm gonna say G0, X0, and right there we see that the ball, uh, the ball center is uh, where this zero point is. That is precisely what we're looking for, and um, that's a good way, <coughs> excuse me, of corroborating uh, that we are in the X zero. Now, the way that I coded this part, this is my X zero versus somewhere my zero being somewhere in here. So all of the job is gonna be it's gonna be taking place on the negative portion of the quadrant. So it's very important that you tell uh, SpruceCam or whatever CAM software that you're using where your zero is. And you know, you could put your zero here, that's, that's no problem. But then, then you have to make your offset here, whatever it needs to be. So it gets trickier. I prefer saying this is gonna be my zero, all of this is negative, and that's how we're gonna find, uh, that's how we're gonna work the problem. All right, the next step is actually trickier than the first because now we're gonna find the center uh, of the rod in, uh, in the Y axis. So the reason why this is trickier is because we have to, we have to do it right or you're gonna get the wrong center, of course. I mean, <laughs> that's a, a no-brainer. Uh, that's kind of an oxymoron. Uh, but, I mean, it's easy to do it right, but you just need to know uh, how to do it. And I'm gonna tell you how I'm gonna do it. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna find the edge of Y on this side, okay? But, but um, actually, let me just explain. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a reading on this side, and then I'm gonna take another reading on this side, and whatever I read, it's gonna be um, I'm gonna divide that by two, and that's gonna be my center, okay? But the important thing is that you have to what whenever you whatever in Z. Okay, whatever height you do that on this side, you must do that on this side as well, or otherwise you're gonna get the center offset from where it really is. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just gonna choose this point. It really doesn't matter which point you choose, as long as you as you choose the same size, uh, the same the same height on both sides. Okay, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna zero my set. Okay, because I want to return to that point. I'm gonna sit on my set, and now I'm gonna find my my Y. Okay, let's back a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna sit on my Y. Bear with me here. This is uh, this is not my zero, of course. It is not my zero. But now I'm gonna go up in in C. And set. I'm gonna go to the other side. And I'm gonna tell my system to go back to set zero by typing in G zero set zero. Hopefully I'm not gonna clash. You know what, I cannot do it there because I'm gonna clash. Let me move a little bit further. Always check before you do this stuff because once you tell the machine to go, it will go. And if it has to break something in the process, it doesn't care. The machine is not watching after your pocket. It will go. All right, here I think, actually, you know what? Let me do it by hand. I'm gonna go to G0, C0. Okay, and now, now that I know I'm safe, I'm just gonna type it in G0, C0. Okay, now I am on the same place that I was when I was here. So when I touch, I'm gonna be making, um, uh, it's, it's like a triangle. I guess I'll put a, a diagram of what I mean in here. And uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move in Y until I see that light. Oh, there we go, okay. Let me just take the exact point where, there we go, okay. Here's the trick. Okay, according to, uh, to uh, Mac tree, we're at coordinate 2.3747. That means that I am at coordinate two inches plus the offset of the ball, which is 400 mils. That right there tells me I am not on Z. I am not on the center of the of the of the uh, of the uh, rod, the circle. But that is okay because I'm going to say divided by two, and now I am at coordinate 1.1873. And you're saying, well, that doesn't make any sense. What are we doing here? 
I'm gonna take this up. This is geometry, guys. <clears throat> and now I'm gonna say G0, Y0. And bam, that's my my center, okay? If you look at it, yep, that is Y0. Why? Well, because when we divided by two the coordinating here, what we did was compute the distance from this side, uh, from the from this border to the center. Now you may be saying, but there is a ball in here. Yes, there was a ball in between, uh, or I would say half a ball in between my edge on this side and the spindle. But there was also a ball on this side, so they will cancel each out. So if you take your your measurement here and then here at the same height, you will cancel balls uh, the ball diameter when you divide by two and you will end up with the uh, with the center in Z okay so that's how you find the center of a rod using this guy and max 3 the arrow I have placed my quarter inch diameter two flute uh, end mill we are not done yet the system needs to know what where is my Z coordinate and in this drawing uh, or in this part, I made my zero the center of the uh, of the uh, of this diameter. That means that I need to know this diameter in order to give that offset to the tool. So when I come down here, okay, basically my tool is touching. Well, look at that. My light is falling apart. Maybe I have to go back to Tormac. Wow. This is truly the end of it. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to take this off. Well guys, unfortunately my, uh, my spindle lamp life came to an end. They are not that expensive, for, so um, I, I guess I'll get one. And I should probably get the one uh, that goes inside of the spindle. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, the um, as I was explaining, now I need to find my Z0. So it is not on top of the part. My because the reason is because we're going to rotate and we're rotating against um, in, in 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 this in the um, x in the x axis. So let me illustrate what would happen. So if if your part has the X axis going through the center. That means that the set zero is somewhere in the center, okay? Basically on that dot in there. Then the part is gonna rotate like this and we will all be happy. But if you make your set zero here and you are gonna rotate on axis, now you're gonna be doing this. And that's not what we want, does it? What we want is to rotate on this dot here. That's why I need to sell, tell my system this is where my set zero is, okay? The center, the center of this guy. How do I do that? Well, I need to know the diameter of this guy. And uh, what's going to happen is that when my, when my tool touches this part, what we are seeing is um, that's not uh, that's not Z zero, but Z equal to the radius of this guy. So if this guy is two inches, then I have to tell Mac 3 that when I am touching this guy, that's actually one, one positive, because it's above, uh, above the zero. Okay, so I'm gonna use a micrometer. I'm gonna measure the diameter on this guy, just to be exact, divide by two, just using our brains, guys, you know, we were born with an amazing calculator, and input that into Mac 3. Here's my two to three, uh, micrometer. This is a brown sharp I acquired on the, some kind of a surplus store the other day. Never used it until now. So let's see what kind of diameter we get in here. And I think this is it. If I'm reading this correctly, this would be 2.06. I wonder if I'm reading this correctly. When everything fails, do a a brain fart check. It is. I'll be darned. 
according to my caliper it is also 2.006 which means that um, this guy would be uh, on 1.003 whenever I get touch off okay so I'm gonna take this to what I know is X0 I'm sorry Z0 which I did I did before I think I did it off camera or actually that's what I was doing when my light died my lamp fell okay so we are on what I had measured there we go so if I rotate this I should see I guess we're not there yet oops sorry about that okay I think we have touch off here or close to man we don't need to get that excited I mean that will be my X0, my Z0, I'm sorry. Uh, except that I have to put an offset, okay? So, measure by the micrometer 2.006. Okay, so I'm gonna say 1.003. Right there, that tells the system that it is already one inches and three thousandths of an inch above zero, which is in the center of that rod. I think we're ready. Behold, the pommel, the lightsaber pommel being manufactured by a Tormac PCNC 1100 and the fourth axis attachment. I cannot believe it and like Yoda would have said uh, that's why you failed but I didn't fail this is an amazing success it looks gorgeous there is no way I would have been able to do this by hand now uh, I haven't removed the parts so I'm just guessing this looks amazing uh, but uh, <laughs> I think it does look amazing um, a few a few things that I want to say before I remove it from the chuck the part looks like it came out you know perfect as I was expecting it to be although uh, the sprue cam doesn't show this output for some reason I mean, it shows the tool path which any anybody with any uh, slightest common sense would know it has to be this is the output if, if, the, if the blade went through here but for some reason the sprue cam shows uh, stuff left over so I kind of suspect that that was just you know just some buggy thing uh, this is sprue cam 7 so it's very possible sprue cam 8, 8 or 9 has improved on those kind of uh, deficiencies uh, but I kind of expected that everything was gonna come out perfect just because the sprue cam chose the tool path and the correct path and the leftover doesn't make sense so that's good that's good that the output is as expected um so i'm gonna remove it from the chalk and uh, i i think i think there is no need to do any kind of other other um processing here i think this is it uh, if there was a need to put this back on the chuck to work it again I don't think that's gonna be simple so that's why I, I, I want to take my time uh, but boy I mean by just feeling it this is just freaking amazing so I'll meet you at the other side of removing this part wow this is this is just freaking amazing um, like I had told you guys before the amount of time that it took me to learn how to cam this is about two years or a year and a half. I gotta thank Jan from NYC CNC because on, with his fourth access video, I finally figured out the missing ingredient. I gave me ideas on how to work the contours and the angles and stuff. There is no way I would have figured that out by myself. I mean, that's why I have been struggling for a year and a half because obviously I had no idea that you could do that. <clears throat> uh, but man, look at this. This is it. This is 
the pommel of a lightsaber or at least the profile that we need now what I'm gonna do is put it on the lathe and give it the, the um, give it just the traditional shape which is something like this right I mean obviously we're gonna cut all of this and we're gonna make it look like a lightsaber pommel and it is very possible that the reason why I did that did it like this because I can make two out of this one so very pleased with this very pleased all right friends I am blown away this is truly a lightsaber pommel okay this looks amazing and there are still a few steps that I need to uh, to take uh, on the lathe a few operations to finish it but the fourth axis operations were amazing I am just blown away by, by how it came out. It looks gorgeous. I think it will it will look gorgeous on a lightsaber prop. Um, and you know, basically, to make this with a fourth axis would have been very hard. You could do it with um, uh, some kind of an indexer. You could have done it by hand, of course. I mean, it could have been done. But just to see the machine do this by following the G code on the program, man, it's like. There is no way I'm gonna try to do this by hand. Why? Why would you? Why would you want to do this by hand when the output from the machine is so much better? Um, and you know, basically, what we have here is three contour operations. Okay, three contour operations, and we repeat it on the axis, uh, a axis. We repeat, re repeat it six times across the 360 degrees so the software does it all you don't have to worry about uh, computing angles and offsets the software does it all once you use the right the right uh, mechanism so the reason why it took me two years to get here is because I wasn't updating the angle I had no idea that you had to do that uh, and that's why um, <laughs> whatever I tried didn't work but now I know how to do it. I am blown away by the results. So this looks very good. Um, I'll definitely make more. And uh, you know, there'll be other videos on how I finish this uh, lightsaber replica. And there is plenty of work to be done here. So there will be much more videos. I mean, uh, there is plenty of material here for like a, a, either half a year or a whole year worth of videos. Uh, because uh, the, the level of intricacies of, on these props can get as, as nitty gritty as you want. It's basically, uh, you can just make something that looks like a lightsaber from the outside, but you can also work on how to make it look cool from the inside. So I plan on, on playing with that a little bit. And then again, there are many other uh, lightsabers that can be constructed, um, you know, from the movies or just your own versions. It's it's infinite. It's an infinite uh, generator, an infinite project generator. So I think the fourth axis will come in very handy uh, for projects like this. And like I said, I mean you could do this by hand, but man, it's just so much easier with the fourth axis. Uh, so thank you, Tormac, for uh, allowing us to have a fourth axis CNC milling machine uh, that actually works. And I thank you for tuning into my, uh, my YouTube channel. Definitely thank you for taking a look at this video. I hope you have enjoyed uh, the fourth axis project and the generation of this lightsaber pommel. See you next time.